Hey there, my name is Richard Jane, and I'm super excited to be representing Team 11 Show Performance. We're a group of excited high school and undergraduate students from around the world who come from a really diverse set of backgrounds, ranging from protein machine learning research all the way to computational neuroscience. I've been absolutely blown away by the work that our team has been able to put together these last 10 days, and I hope you feel the same way. So let me introduce you to recombinant Cho. Cho stands for Chinese home hamster ovary, and as you can probably tell from that name, these cells are isolated from the ovary of Chinese hamsters. Um, these cells are really popular in expression systems, in particular in recombinant biology, which has truly been a keystone of synthetic biology research in this last decade. As you can see, taking synthetic genes, putting them into a plasmid, and then transfecting this in the Cho expression system can lead to an extraction of your protein in a desirable way that is cost-effective and efficacious. As you can see, here are some of the leading drugs that even exist blockbuster drugs like Humira Keytruda have been produced in Cho expression systems. So this is clearly a huge market and Cho is an effective chassis that is very, very popular. As you can see over here, just an increased size of the amount of drugs that are in this list. So let me take you to the central dogma of molecular biology. And I think this is something we can probably relate to back to our high school biology classes, right? But DNA goes to RNA, which goes to protein. But in this process, there are codons, which are these three nucleotides that code for the amino acids, right? But there's a redundancy in codons. As you can see, there are multiple codons that code for the same amino acid. And although you would have the same result in protein, the efficiency of the protein expression can change drastically, as you can see, up to 1,000x fire supporting literature. So if you correctly can select which codon to use here, you could potentially improve the efficiency, the efficacy of your design by a lot, saving time, money, and plasmid. As you can see here, here are some current players in the codon optimization space. But as you'll quickly realize, these techniques are very outdated. They simply use lookup tables that can look up which codon to use, and they've determined one codon that is the most optimal. Others use indices, so they'll say, hey, this organism Cho uses 30% CU use, you know, 20% CUC, etc. That's just a hypothetical example. And they'll randomly replace the codons in your sequence to match that frequency. But we challenge this, and the literature does support this now. New literature is showing that rare codons um, cannot necessarily be rate limiting. In addition, it's not necessarily true that just replacing all of the rare codons, you know, the, these codons that are perhaps lesser in, in the choked underlying genome with high frequency codons, that doesn't necessarily improve function. So current codon optimization standards are negatively impacting efficacy, and this is very, very important in design of these synthetic genes. So we aim to develop a model that can learn sequential and contextual information from the underlying genome of Cho cells. And as you can probably tell, AI and machine learning is a great task for this. We avoid toxicity. These genes are more likely to be well expressed and they're generalized. And so the techniques we utilize to do this are a variety of computational biology methods. But in the machine learning space, we utilize state-of-the-art encoders like evolutionary scales ESM to be able to encode proteins and then develop custom decoder models so that the model can then decode those into predicted high expression gene sequences. We also design an application that's free to use under an MIT license so that users, researchers, and biopharmaceutical companies can use our tool. As you can see here is a user workflow of what we developed here. User has their synthetic gene sequence, they can input it into our Cho former tool, and then um, it will output an optimized sequence you can put in your expression vector. Here are the steps we utilize to build Cho former, as well as a model we call Cho X. This is kind of a side project from our main research project that we've done here, but Cho X, X is able to predict the protein expression of genes from the DNA sequence. And we've been able to do this by training a model on RNA expression data, performing differential gene expression analyses and, and whatnot, and then fine tuning this model on uh, protein abundance data that we've collected. So as you can see here, here are some model diagrams. Uh, we have the Cho expression model architecture, the Cho former model architecture. As you can see, we are using transformers, and we take the input protein, uh, create an encoding of this, and then undergo this architecture to be able to decode this as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence task for the Cho former model. And the Cho expression model is predicting an expression value, which we then use as kind of augmenting our data to train Cho former. And as you can see, uh, Cho former outperforms the uh, you know original codon adaptation index of these genes very, very significantly. And codon adaptation index is highly correlated with real-world expression based on a reference literature. It also preserves the rare codon usage by this huge box of outliers right here that contribute to lower codon adaptation index for genes that are intentionally lesser expressed. This means that we're not necessarily just vastly going to increase the codon adaptation index of every single gene. It is relative, and it seems to be understanding the context of the underlying gene. Um, as you can see here, just the mean of the optimizers is significantly higher than the original and calculated a Jacquard similarity as well. Uh, we also looked at translational efficiency metrics, and we found that uh, this new GTAI or tRNA adaptation index is highly predicted of, of protein abundance in the real world. There's very recent literature that is, is proposing this, and we also find that our tool outperforms on the TIA benchmark as well. We've also collected a set of 50 plus real world drugs and genes, which we've uh, compiled and tried to submit to Polaris uh, towards uh, submitting another data set and benchmark here. And we've also been developing uh, scripts to calculate quantitative metrics listed here. 
you can access choformer.com. It's freely available under an MIT license and look at our Cho expression predictor as well as our Cho uh, decoder, which will take a look at um, optimizing your original protein sequence into an optimized codon sequence. So choformer.com, it's available. And thank you for listening.